However, in Europe, they'll be the last central bank to recognize it uh, because their wage data is pretty lagged. They've got, they've got three data points they look at, negotiated wages, compensation per employer, and the labor cost index. We only have the data for the third quarter. We don't have this quarter's numbers. We don't have November's, October's numbers. We have to wait until we get to March. I think it's around the 16th of March we get Q4. So the ECB is going to react with a lag to this wage situation. But I'm a man who uses forward-looking indicators, as you kind of pointed out. We use surveys such as PMIs. There's a European Commission survey as well. And in, in fact, just looking at services and inflation is another factor too. All three of those indicators are pointing to strong wage gains because of labor shortages being at not just uh, historical, but absolute ridiculously record highs um, for those labor shortages and also inflation expectations in Europe increasing as well. So I'm going to find it very difficult to understand why wages should slow down next year unless we have some big demand shock. And I just don't see that happening. Um, I'm the school of thought. I want to see wages up. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to see hyper 70s, 70s level. I want to see me medium wages go up. I think it's about time on both sides of the Atlantic that people got paid a fair wage. But Jordan, in terms of what it means, though, uh, for some of these key uh, foreign exchange pairs, uh, I mean, I suppose we'll start off on the euro dollar on that basis. Yes. So on euro dollar, um, the guest uh, who spoke just before me, who introduced this section, we're looking for dollar strength to continue into the new year, but only for one quarter for about three months. So I, I think Eurodollar dollar could get to 110. So it's about two or three big figures from here. And the reason I say that is in January, February and March, we're still going to be witnessing China slow down. China's now the euro, euro area's biggest trading partner. And when China's slowing down and its demand for European exports falls, the euro weakens. We're also seeing the trade surplus of the euro area um, significantly deteriorating.